Today's development follows a similar wave of violent action on Saturday when hundreds of people were arrested. It's clear the military is raising the stakes, but how far is it willing to go in its crackdown? Well, they're certainly um, in, in, intensifying their, uh, you know, their, their measures against the protesters over this weekend. And um, yesterday, toughest crackdown so far. Today, even tougher. Um, number of deaths reported. And the military moved in very early today to try and uh, disrupt the protests. Um, they've been using live bullets, stun guns, tear gas. How far? Well, everybody in Myanmar knows what happened in 1988 and 2007 when protests ended in, in bloodbaths. Uh, the, the military so far has been somewhat constraining itself. It may be difficult to imagine that when you look at the scenes, but um, they could have gone in much tougher um, earlier. Um, they are obviously aware of the international community watching. They're aware that these protests, are, despite their attempts to crack down on the internet, are being streamed in, in real time. And so far, it seemed that they've been sort of loath to really go in as hard as they might. That could all be changing this weekend. Remember, the, the military here, you know, they're not, um, they've, they're, they've, they've run a, you know, these generals grew, grew up as officers under previous dictatorships. They're used to r ruling this country with an iron hand. They're not about to back down. They didn't seize power just to sort of hand over because of some protests in the streets. So if it comes down to it, if it's the protesters and the strikers versus the military, then the military will go in even harder. And today is a very worrying side of a nationwide crackdown. It's not just in several areas in Yangon, it's across the country. Yeah, Philip, as you mentioned, the military uh, not willing to back down. So any idea if this will deter or galvanize the protesters, what effect will this fresh violence have on the people in the streets? Well, I can tell you, I've been speaking to people there this morning. Um, they even after yesterday, they have come out in force and, and even more prepared. You know, these are starting to look like some of the scenes that may be familiar from Hong Kong. They're in construction hats. They've got homemade shields. They're organizing barricades. They're organizing uh, messengers, couriers. They're not, they're not going away. They see this as their only chance. If, if they aren't on the streets now and um, the strikers don't continue to bring um, elements of government service to a halt, they fear that, you know, the moment will the moment will be passed. They need to keep this momentum going. And yesterday, every time, last weekend when there were killings in Mandalay, yesterday the added arrests, they've just come back out in greater numbers and more determined. And that's what they're telling me this morning. They're telling me if we started to give way now in the face of this level of threat and intimidation, you know, we're, we're going to lose this struggle. So, so no, they're, um, they're remaining on the streets and they are very defiant. Speaking of intimidation, Myanmar's ambassador to the United Nations was fired by the junta after appealing for international help to stop the coup. Now, the U.S. and the EU have condemned the coup, but what avenues are there for them to take meaningful action? Yeah, this statement by the UN ambassador, the Burmese ambassador, Myanmar ambassador to the UN on Friday evening was humiliating for the junta and also completely took them by surprise. Um, what it really, his words, his appeal for the international community to help really is going to up the ante in terms of EU powers, um, the Americans, Canadians, the British, to sort of to put in more meaningful, for example, much tougher sanctions. So far, those powers have sort of hesitated about how far to go with sanctions because of the impact on the economy. Well, you know, the people of Myanmar are on strike now in many sectors. The economy is already in a very parlous condition. Cash is running out at ATMs. Prices are soaring in the markets. So I think these scenes that you're seeing this weekend, combined with the UN ambassador's comments, will really mean that, you know, tomorrow morning, these governments, today, these governments are really going to be thinking, what can we do now? Because they will be coming under intense public pressure to take some tougher measures. Um, Russia and China are going to probably block coordinated action at the UN. Other nations in Southeast stage are always loath to interfere in each other's um, activities. But the um, European and, uh, you know, Australians, Americans who have investments there and do have some sway, I think you'll see them taking a much tougher feeling. The, they have to take much tougher sanctions in coming days. All right. Thank you very much, Philip. Philip Sherwell reporting.